fear, power, control. Let's talk about staying relevant in the age of tech layoffs, LLMs, and AI software engineers like Devin. We've all seen it. It's becoming more real every day. The idea, the possibility that a role like software engineering can be automated by a series of AI agents. So right away, I just want to share all the secrets, everything we're going to be discussing in this video. I'm going to give it all away right now. So what are the big ideas to staying relevant in the age of AI software engineers? In this video, we're going to talk about these three big ideas. To a company, you're an asset and your liability. Do you know your A to L ratio? Do you know your asset to liability ratio? This is gonna change how you think about your work, how you think about your place in your company. You wanna make sure you're an asset way more than your liability to your company. We're going to dig into this idea more in this video. Your tools and your relevant experience define how much power you have as an asset to a company, and therefore it defines your career. So you have to ask yourself, is your engineering tool set evolving? We're gonna talk about what it means to really evolve your engineering tool set, and then we're gonna double click into what it really means to be a more productive engineer. At the end of the day, it's really all about our tools and our relevant experience. Last big idea, to control your career, you need to dig into your fear of AI's potential. Understand the potential of the AI tooling, the AI coding assistants, so that you can wield them so that you can take control of them so that you can use them to benefit your career to progress your products to progress your ideas these are the big ideas we're going to cover let's start with an uncomfortable question that is critical to staying relevant in the age of ai do companies need software engineers. Let's break this down. Understanding the intricacies of this simple question can really dictate your career in the age of AI. Let me explain how. So a great company, roughly speaking, cares about two things, their users' perception and their profits, right? I think we can generally agree on that. Every person in a company consumes resources, aka capital, and generates value for their users, which in return generates capital for the business, right? This creates a cycle that can be diagrammed like this. You have engineers that build for users, users drive profits, and profits fund engineers. This is the cornerstone simplified model of every software business. This is what it's all about. Keep this diagram in your mind as we progress here. So let's answer the question, right? Do companies need software engineers? Absolutely. It's a big blanket. Yes. Software businesses need engineers like you and I to drive product growth, to satisfy users, which then generates revenue. Engineers have been and are the critical asset of software businesses. And now the question that's really on everyone's mind is, but for how long? With AI coding assistants, with tools like Devon, Microsoft just dropped their auto dev paper. With these tools coming out, the real question we're, we're really wondering is for how long? Let's talk about the kings of knowledge work. Software engineers for the past 20 years have been one of the highest paid knowledge workers to ever exist. Knowing how to write code gave you the ability to progress your career and raise your social economic status to one of the highest in the world, right? On average. We engineers really have been the kings of knowledge work. Knowledge, data, information, the way to control, transfer, and create data is to hire an engineer. That is what we are. In the most fundamental form, engineers are the best manipulators of data. Big tech companies like Google have defined systems around attracting the best engineers in the world. You know this, other companies have jumped on this bandwagon. There's been a push against this a little bit in the last couple of years, and you and I both know why that's what we're getting to right now, right? This has kind of been the standard, right? Do whatever it costs, do whatever it takes to attract the best talent because they are a massive unit of value creation. Engineers are just a huge unit of value creation for any business. And creating value means satisfying users, which means generating revenue and capital for the business. But now the kings have a challenger. Us engineers, we really have been the kings of knowledge work, but that is changing. You know exactly why. If you know where this is going and if you're enjoying this so far and really understanding it, hit the like, hit the sub, and let's talk about the challenger that interestingly we ourselves have created, AI LLM coding assistants, and now full-on AI software engineers. In order to understand where things are headed, you have to follow the money and you have to follow the technology. You have to get into the entrepreneur, the VC, and the investor's mindset, right? So they're all looking at new AI technology and asking themselves, as any great investor and entrepreneur should, they're running this, this, this conversation in their head. We have this asset in our company that generates massive value, but is also expensive. And of course, here I'm talking about software engineers, the kings of knowledge work. And they're asking themselves, do we still need software engineers? They cost 
cost the most and they give the most. If we can replace them, we'll be left with a low cost unit of massive value creation because that is what we do as engineers. We generate massive, massive value by creating digital assets that can be sold and resold at virtually no cost, right? This is the only equation you really need to know to control and accelerate your career. If you understand this conversation, if you understand how company owners think, how entrepreneurs think, how VCs think, how investors are thinking, and how they're thinking about, you know, not at a, at a personal level at all, just at a truly functional, you know, um, $1 and $10 out type of framework, right? Where your business is a function of value creation. You need to input units of labor. You need to input engineers. You need to input ideas and problems and solution and outcomes, value for users and the revenue and profits that come with solving a problem, right? It's really as simple as that. So if you understand this conversation, do we still need software engineers? They cost the most, but they also give the most. If we can replace them, we'll be left with a low cost unit of massive value creation. This is where everything is going. Follow the money, follow the technology, and you'll be able to answer many, many, many questions. So let's talk about the new kings of knowledge work, because it's not exactly what you think, at least not yet. So who are the new kings? Who are the new kings of knowledge work? Your tools and your relevant experience define how much power you have as a productive unit in a business, aka how much of an asset you are. And therefore, it defines your career. It defines your career growth. It defines your career trajectory. So the only real thing you should be asking yourself is, is your tool set evolving? And do you have relevant experience? Software engineers that look into the fear and excitement of what they can do, what they can build, what they can become with AI powered tools will be the new kings. It's not going to be a jump, an instant flash to all of a sudden everyone's using Devon to build everything, right? That's not how software works. That's not how evolution works. That's not how, you know, industries progress. It's one step at a time. Sometimes it feels like a big step. Sometimes it feels like rapid steps. But the next most important step is AI powered engineers, AI charged engineers, engineers that use Devon, engineers that use Ader, engineers that use Cursor and whatever's coming next. Those people, we are the new kings of knowledge work. It's the agentic engineer. It's the AI powered engineer that will be, and to be totally honest and frank, are already the most valuable unit of a software business, right? AKA the most valuable asset with the best asset to liability ratio. The A to L ratio is really important because you have to pay everyone, right? You need to pay everyone a salary. There's cost of goods, there's cost of human labor up until the point when there's not, right? And then everything goes out the window, but that time isn't here. And contrary to popular belief, I don't think it's gonna be here for at least another five plus years. So there's this golden age for agentic engineers and AI powered engineers, which is exactly what we focus on on this channel a ton. It's all about finding the best tool for the job. Right now, the best tool is LLM powered tools, coding assistants, powerful wrappers around fast models, accurate models, discovery, LLM benchmarking, constructing great prompts and orchestrating all of these things put together, right? The LLM, the tool, the code, the prompt, orchestrating the system that drives the next waves of value. Some Simple framework to really stick to evolve, thrive, die, right? A thing isn't beautiful because it lasts forever. Our careers have expiration dates. This is a fact of life. Let's just accept that, right? Accept this and bring your attention to more important, impactful, actionable questions. Like how can I evolve to extend my expiration date? That's a much better question than am I gonna lose my job, right? Don't focus on that. You can't control that. What you can control is am I putting my best foot forward? Am I learning the right tools? Do I have the right information channel set up? Am I following the right people? Am I following the right crowd? Do I understand where technology is going? Do I understand what my edges are? Am I using the right AI tools, right? Focus on what matters. Focus on the things you can change, right? How can I become the most powerful unit of productivity in the age of AI and LLMs and AI coding assistance? And don't get me wrong, I'm not a grind set, you know, grind till you die, 16 hours a day type of guy. When you're in, you're in. When you're out, you're out. I don't want you to waste your life working more than you need to, but you know, when you're on and when you're building and when you're engineering, I want you to win and I want you to win fast. And as an engineer, there's only two real ways to do that. Find better tools and get more relevant experience. The relevant part is very important. The name of the game in software engineering is evolve, thrive, die. It always has been. It's just accelerating with AI tooling. New tools and skills increase in demand while others will fade. I can guarantee you in job interviews and job postings, the best companies are going to know and understand that this signal is here and they're gonna start looking and asking for what coding assistant do you use, right? It's all about that next level. It's all about that evolution of your tool set. This is the next step for engineers.
So, you know, the new interview question, the new set of things, it's going to be less about, you know, code bubble sort, write this sorting algorithm, write this data structure, you know, tweak this, modify that, like this on hands, typing every character, you know, lower level for no reason type question is going to disappear. And the new interview questions are going to be things like this, right? Prompt bubble sort, prompt that backend service, right? Prompt this UI component, prompt this, you know, this library of existing UI components, right? Design the system, right? Good. Now that you design the system, show us how you would prompt the SMS service, right? And wire it to the database layer, right? These are more realistic day-to-day -day level AI powered engineer type tasks that are useful to solve, right? You want to think of yourself moving up the abstraction layer, right? Think more like a product manager and a UX designer. Instruct the system. Talk to your computer faster with prompts, right? Evolve your tool set. Our fear is a signal of threat. Some of these signals are real. Most of them are not. I think that this is a a very real fear and a very real signal and that's okay the fear of ai and the fear of coding assistance and the fear of ai software engineers replacing us and threatening our ability to you know provide for ourselves and to provide for our families and to you know create a career if you're just getting started right like what a huge threat you're facing right will i even have work will there be work when i get out of college when i finish this boot camp wherever you're at right and if you're already an established engineer how can I maintain this, right? I, I need, I have a family to feed or I, I want to start a family. Whatever your case is, whatever situation you're in, right? Let this fear be a signal to you to evolve and nothing else. That's all it is. This is your signal. You know, when Devin comes out and you're like, oh, wow, like that's wild. It truly is amazing. Even if they're only hitting 13% of cases on this software engineering benchmark, 13% is a great start, right? It's beating Claw 2. It's beating everything else by, you know, some almost 10%, right? All great engineers know there's always another version coming. Coming, right so when you see things like this let fear be your power right to take control over what's happening fear is a signal to evolve and nothing else so let's talk about the big ideas let's recap them they're really important think like a company think like a business owner to a company every hire every engineer is an asset and a liability they pay you and they're hoping that that payment pays off with you generating useful product for your users you want to be understanding your asset to liability ratio you want to be more of an asset you want to be less of a liability i'm not saying take a pay cut you should be paid as much as you're worth and more if you can negotiate it but what i am saying is make sure that you are an asset right if you're a massive asset to the company they're going to throw money at you as long as you can negotiate it so maximize your a to l ratio how Use the best tool for the job and keep learning. And again, in the age of AI, your tools and your relevant experience define how much power you have as an asset to a company and therefore defines your career. So always just constantly be asking yourself, is your tool set evolving? Are you learning? And the tools you need to be learning right now are very clearly AI coding assistance. It's very clearly LLM technology. It's very clearly prompt engineering. It's very clearly some of these tools that are very intimidating. And you're like, wow, that looks like that could be the thing that you know replaces me down the line and that might be true again i want to focus on this idea we're in this goldilocks zone where if you're learning you're staying sharp you have the right information channels of course i recommend my own channel i'm biased we really deep dive here and we look at concrete examples of how you can utilize these tools and it's been so incredible you know one of the founding open ai engineers has directly tweeted one of our videos on a really really on topic conversation right automating software engineering where he dives into moving up the stage Stack. Just like we've been talking about on the channel, you want to move up to higher levels of abstraction. There's going to be a progression of the AI doing more and the human doing less while providing oversight. And just like we have truly experienced on the channel, and you can literally play back the videos and watch this evolution happen, right? First, we were just writing code. Then we're using GitHub Copilot. Then we used ChatGPT, started using and creating some really cool and efficient prompts. Then we moved to larger and larger code diffs using tools like Cursor and Aider. And most recently, Cursor's Copilot++. And really incredibly, he literally links to one of the videos on the channel. He links to something that we've been working on, something we've been talking about. Cursor's Copilot++. Plus Plus. So incredible. It's such an honor to have such a legendary engineer literally tweet and reference one of the videos on the channel. And then, of course, what follows is the discussion about Devin. And he's got Devin linked here, right? So there's a lot of excitement, but it's all about evolving your tool set, right? As engineers with our boots on the ground, it's all about the concrete step we can take and the things that we can continue to learn to push our advantage, to push our 
edge. Let your fear of being replaced by AI guide you to the best tool. It's such a real kind of human thing to, to just be afraid of what's coming next and to not understand how technology will affect our future. But let that fear help guide you to control your career. You want to be digging into your fear of AI and powerful AI tools so that you can wield them yourself. It's all about taking action. Fear is not the mind killer. Fear with inaction is the mind killer. So as soon as you feel yourself like, uh, Devon tool is crazy. That's going to change everything forever. Am I even going to have a job? Start digging in, start learning, start researching, start using existing co-pilots, get yourself started and running with your edge as a next level engineer, as the evolution of an engineer, the AI charge engineer, the agentic engineer. On this channel, we don't focus on the fear so much. I try really hard not to clickbait on things that are coming out and you know say crazy things like all of our jobs are gonna be taken, right? That's not helpful, right? On the channel, we focus on actionable steps, concrete tools and technology that we can use to progress our career, to progress our products, to progress our journey as engineers and our journey as builders. We are gonna be here until our machines are a better asset without us. And right now, that is just simply not the case case. The human in the loop is still ultra important and we're a critical step to building and to really holding up the entire industry of software engineering. Whatever comes next, we're going to be here covering it on the channel. Cursor, Ader, Devin, Autodev, whatever the next big thing is, we're going to be here talking about it, breaking it down. We'll be discussing the macro and micro perspective of all these new tools and I'm going to be sharing, you know, what I am using on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And I can tell you right now, when I sit down to write code, I'm never building anything without an AI coding assistant. The game has changed. We need to change with it. Cursor, Ader, Devon, Autodev, whatever it's called, whatever shape or form it takes, we'll be covering it here on the channel. Hit the like, hit the sub if you want to stay plugged in to these ideas and this perspective. I think it's really important to follow and listen to information streams that are action-oriented, positive-leaning, more optimistic versus this like pessimistic fear of, oh, AI is coming, it's all going to be over soon. Like that, that isn't useful. It's not helpful. It won't help you accomplish anything. So if you enjoy these yourself, definitely hit the like, hit the sub so that other engineers can feel this as well. Stay focused, keep building, and I'll see you in the next one.